This is for the Hebrew Israelites. I read this before, but in fact, I didn't even talk about that. What I want to talk about is this. So I said, get the facts in the argument. So the Hebrews talk about their, they invented writing, Hebrew is the oldest language. If they invented writing and Hebrew is the oldest language, then they should therefore have the world's oldest alphabet. Unfortunately, they don't. Why? Get the facts in the argument. The world's oldest known alphabet was developed in central Egypt, 2000 BCE from a hieroglyphic prototype. And what? Over the next 500 years spread to Canaan and eventually to the rest of the world. So y'all can forget that you didn't have an alphabet. It didn't even get to you until 500 years after it was already developed in Egypt. So how Hebrew Israelites claim that they invented writing is beyond me. It's beyond Seti. It's beyond Anka Kek. Okay? We, I don't know. That they even get their numbers from ancient. They're too stupid to have their own numbers. Scribes in Iron Age Judah continued to use Egyptian numbers 550 years after the end of the Egyptian Empire. So if Yahweh was so if Yahweh was so great, and if Yahweh took y'all out of Egypt, why didn't y'all leave our numbers behind? So where we at? So yeah, so they used our numbers 550 years after we was already through. After we was already through, scribes in Iron Age Judah continued to use Egyptian numbers 550 years after the end of the Egyptian Empire. So I'm asking Nasi, I'm asking Tezoriak, I'm asking Hashar and Zion Lex, especially Zion Lex because he is Mr. Hebrew, according to himself. So Zion, why is it that Yahweh concedes, or whatever y'all call your God, why is it your God brought you out of Egypt, but y'all didn't leave our numbers behind? Y'all didn't leave our letters behind, our alphabet behind. All y'all took with you was Egypt. So y'all need to stop talking about Egypt. We don't talk, stop talking about your mama. Here you go. So let's get the facts in the argument too. Now this is the information I did not present at the debate, so I'm just running it down. The Phoenicians did not create the alphabet, because they always say they got it from the Phoenicians. And that's how you're going to relate it to the polo, um, the polo Sinatic text, right, from which you get Phoenician and all this other stuff. The Phoenicians did not create the alphabet. They marketed it, taking it apparently from Egypt and Crete. Okay? Now, people sleep on Crete. They forget Crete, and they act like Crete didn't exist. They imported it piecemeal to Tyre, Sidon, and Byblos, and exported it to every city on the Mediterranean. The Levant is on the Mediterranean for you Hebrew Israelites. So is Canaan. All right? They were the middlemen, not the producers of the alphabet. By the time of Homer, the Greeks were taking over this Phoenician or the allied Aramaic alphabet and were calling it by the Semitic names of the first two letters, Alpha, Beta, Hebrew, Aleph, Beth. That's from Our Oriental Heritage by uh, Will Durant, PhD, Columbia University. So let's go check out his work if you're interested in seeing it. All right? Um, the original people of Crete were black. Oh, this is important. The original people of Crete were black Africans. That is important, people, because a lot often we often want to talk about how things were transmissioned to other places outside of Africa. Because in the Mediterranean, in the Mediterranean, you had other black civilizations that were closely allied with ancient Kemet. And we act like they did not exist. And we have to stop doing that because we're leaving our other ancestors, our other family members out of the story. All right? If we claim it, if we're gonna claim our stuff, let's claim all of our stuff. The ancestors of the Minoans dwelt in the grasslands of North Africa before that area dried up and became a great desert. As the Saharan sands encroached on their homeland, they took to the sea and in Crete and the neighboring islands set up a maritime culture. That's very important. It's very important that you understand that. You have to understand that when the Sahara dried up, not only did the Saharan, the, 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 the techno-Saharan complex culture that comes out of what we call Tassili culture, right? Don't forget about Tassili. We never talk about Tassili. How come nobody talks about Tassili? You got to talk about Tassili. I rep Tassili all day. Because when you look at Tassili, you're looking at cave art that goes back so old that shows everything that we find in Egypt later. You feel me? And you can't even really say it later because, it, look, I hate to say it, but our history, I'm talking about the way we're gathering it up, it's in such a mess that we do have to constantly step back. Why? Because when you look at the dating of the chronology that they give us for ancient Egypt, 5,000 BCE is a joke. That's a joke. When you look at the work 
that, and I'm going to reference the white boy, the geologist Robert Shockley, and what he dated the Sphinx to what, uh, 15,000 BCE or something like that, right? 7, BCE. Oh, oh yeah, at least seven, eight thousand BCE, right? And then the other, and I'm going to reference another cracker. Um, what's his name? Robert Bouval. I've spoken with him when he did his um, uh, uh, the uh, computerized dating um system using um astronomy right yeah him and um uh uh, uh burlock i think the guy's name is or oh, starts with it starts with a b uh Bo boldly boldly i think the guy's name is all right something something like that forget his name they both did um black genesis together yeah. right so when he when they do that the dating is so beyond this silly 5000 bce they try to give the other reason why you can't even get into the Sumerian conversation and that Mesopotamian garbage is because of the fact that they built the Aswan High Dam and they buried all that Nubian evidence. That was not an accident because the electricity that they claimed that they were going to get from that High Dam to funnel into Upper Egypt and Cairo never even got there. So then why did you build the Aswan High Dam and create Lake Nasser drowning all of that Nubian evidence? Because that Nubian evidence would have shown you that the civilizations that predate Kemet that gave and birth to Kemet, teacher, as he said, Egypt was the daughter. She was not the mama and the papa. She was the daughter of those civilizations further up the Nile and throughout the um, Saharan complex. So she certainly was a composite civilization made up of multiple African civilizations that predated her. You follow what I'm saying? So we got to know all of that. But getting back to the people of Crete, all right? The first civilization of Europe, oh, I wish I could see the rest of it. Unfortunately, I can't, but I'll try to guess. The first civilization of Europe uh, was established on the island of Crete. It is called the Minoan culture after King Minos, an early legendary ruler of the islands uh, where the ancestors of the Cretans, uh, something we know were natives of Africa, a branch of Western Ethiopians. That's Professor John G. Jackson. That's one of Dr. John Henry Clark's um, uh, 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 mentors, okay, out of the Harlem History Club with Willis Huggins. Uh, the original people of Crete were black Africans. Anthropologists are inclined to view that the Neolithic people of Crete were immigrants. We hear Neolithic, that's Stone Age, and probably came from North Africa. That's C.H. and H.B. Hughes, Crete, the forerunner of Greece, Okay. Oh, uh, here you have, uh, I never call a white man, sir. Here you have um, Arthur John Evans, British archaeologist, right? Um, the multiplicity of, I can't see what it says, something connections with the old indigenous race of the, of the opposite African coast. And I'm not going to even deal with that one. Oh, what he's telling you is that they deal with the pre-dynastic population of the Nile Valley and something, something fat can be hard to explain through the other hypothesis than that actual sediment in Southern Crete. All, right, all they're telling you in that passage we can't see is that the people who settled Crete basically came from the pre-dynastic population of the Nile Valley. And that's basically what you need to know about that. Crete, Egypt's younger sister. While the majority of the original Neolithic, say it again. I ain't got ain't nothing wrong with my thing. There's something wrong with your thing. I don't know how to fix that. The only way I can fix that is to make this smaller. Anybody know how to make the screen smaller? You know how you can go from big, big, big to small, small, small? Normally, you could do that with this right here. This, um, anytime you see this, the magnifying glass, you can make yeah, You went way back. That's all right. Move forward. Crease younger sister. Boom. All right. Better, blah, blah, boom. I covered that. I covered that before. Right, here we go. What did I say here? Right. Nah, I put them up there. I like when white folks tell on each other. No, nah, well, I didn't use it. I don't know. If I got a note, I'll read from my notes, and that's it. You heard? I know that, but I wouldn't have known what page to turn to to get my notes. Ones found in tombs are Egyptian. Here you go. <laughs> It said he, I want maybe said he could tell us why. Because I'm going to read from this. And, then, and it said he could tell us why this is true. 
This is a verse for the Israelites. In the hearts and souls of the Israelites lies ancient Kemet. I wish I could see what the rest says, even though I wrote it. I don't remember. We actually have hundreds of Iron Age. And this is a quote from Did God Have a Wife? Archaeology and Folk Religion in Ancient Israel by William, William G. Diver. We actually have hundreds of Iron Age amulets, mostly from Judean tombs. But again, few biblical scholars have paid attention to them. I wonder why. Amulets, by definition, are magic symbols. Used mostly to bring good luck, atropaic, turning away evil. They would probably have been used by many people in ancient Israel. And being amongst their most precious possessions, they were buried with the deceased. The most common ones found in the tombs are Egyptian, Tezoriak, um, uh, 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 Lex, Zion Lex, Nazi. The most common ones found in the Israelite tombs are Egyptian. Eye of Horus Plex, figurines of Egyptian deities, especially Bess, guardian of the dead. Come on, man. Y'all need to stop playing. Y'all need to stop playing. Okay? Uh-oh. Here we go. Here we go. What is the Pentateuch? Let's deal with that Pentateuch. I once gave a lecture here, and I told y'all that the best lie that the um, Hebrews ever told was that the Septuagint was translated from this book called the Pentateuch. That's a lie. And as long as you can stop them at that lie, you got them stopped dead in their tracks. The Septuagint was never translated from the Pentateuch. All right? In fact, the, the Septuagint is the oldest Bible in the world. Okay? It is not the Torah. It is not the Masoretic text. It is not. It's the Septuagint. The Septuagint is the you know oldest that? Bible in the world. Did you know that, huh? Okay? Let nobody lie to you. Did you know that, huh? Uh, which one? Straight up and down. If you look, I'll tell you why. Because if you look at the Sinaitic text, which they call the oldest Bible in the world, it's not written in Hebrew. The Sinaitic text is written in Greek. The Septuagint was the Greek version of the Bible. The, Septu the, the Sinaitic text witnesses to the Septuagint, not to the Masoretic text. The Sinaitic, text, the Sinaitic text, which is the oldest Bible in the world, does not witness to the King James Version of the Bible. It does not witness to their Torah. It does not, 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 not to their Masoretic Torah. It does not. You understand what I'm saying? Straight up and down. It does not. Stop lying about the Pentateuch. What is the Pentateuch? The first, this is what it says. I, I, this, this, this is the Hebrew lie. The, this is the lie they tell you. The Pentateuch is the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, traditionally ascribed to Moses. It is now held by scholars to be a compilation from text of the 9th to 5th centuries B.C. Jewish name Torah. Okay? Now, that's the Hebrew lie. Stop lying about the Pentateuch. I don't even remember what I wrote here, folks. I'm just going off the head with stuff I was supposed to present at the debate that I never got to present. Egypt, this is from Lasting Impressions. New Bula, oh Lord. Here you go. Egyptian Eye Material Code. Listen to this. Guys, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Egypt probably exerted the strongest influence. You're going to like this. Egypt probably exerted the strongest influence on Judahite iconography. Wait, hold on. Did you see this? This is from the book Lasting Impressions by Robert Deutsch, Biblical Archaeology Review. Said, I hope you like this. See, I use their own people to tell on them because they don't believe us, so they might believe their own people. You feel me? This is for them Hebrew Israelites. This is from the Biblical Archaeology Review. Stop lying about the Pentateuch, okay? Egypt probably, this is, this is not Shaka Amos, this is not Seti, this is not um, Anka Kek. This is from Biblical Archaeology Review by Robert Deutsch, okay? Lasting Impressions, New Bullai Reveal Egyptian Style Emblems on Judah's Royal Seals. Because y'all claim Judah. Or you Hebrew Israelites, 
Y'all all claim Judah, all of you. So I don't care about Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel, because y'all don't really claim that. Y'all say that they were pagans and blah, 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 blah. All y'all claim is Judah. That's why y'all always got that lion, the lion of Judah. Well, we're going we gonna, to we gonna lift up the dress on Judah uh -oh. and show you what's under it. Okay? Uh -oh. Here you go. We're going to show you all that Egyptian hardware under the, under the Judahite dress that they want to get away from. No, Egypt, no, no, no. Egypt probably exerted... Egypt probably exerted the strongest influence on Judahite iconography. But elements from other cultures, Canaanite, Messianian, um, um, Assyrian, and Hittite can be clearly discerned as well. Aramaic and Assyrian motifs are also common in both Judahite and Phoenician art. Judah was hardly the only ancient culture to borrow iconography from its neighbors. Phoenician cities, including Tyre, Sidon, and especially Byblos, were awash in Egyptianized material culture. Okay, let me put that to you in layman terms. That means all of that part of the world, Phoenician cities, including Tyre and Sidon, Byblos, including Assyrian and Hittite, all of them cultures were awash in Egyptianized material culture. I don't care how far you get when you step outside of Africa in the ancient world. All of it was Egypt. I didn't say some of it. I said all of it. All of it. Period. I'm going to move on from that. Now, I need to see this over here, so I'm wishing you can't. There's no way you can make that screen smaller. No, I don't make this. I ain't going to mess it up. Hold on. Oh, man, there's a way that you can do it. You got, you got to go in the view. And Just go in the view at the top. You got to know how to work your computer, huh? How you don't know to go in the view at the top just to make it smaller? You're just making it smaller. And you go in the settings and shit like that. Yeah, go in the settings. Everything can be made bigger and smaller. Everything can. Dude, y'all got homosexuality on the brain too much for me, man. That making me look at people funny. You already know what they say. The one screaming no homo is the biggest homo in the room. I'm sorry, dude. That's why I told you. You never hear me say that. Real talk. Look at what um, the guy who wrote the New Testament, Desiderius Erasmus, he was screaming no homo. Oh, you got it. Oh, got it. oh. It moved over, though. Okay. Good. We good money. Oh, we oh, good money. Cool. We can work with it like that. What's wrong? Hey, we good. Oh. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Daughter Thus of Sidon. Because they tell you the Pentateuch. See, this is what I told you before. The greatest lie that the Hebrew ever told you, and I hope you're taking notes, because I said this before and I'm repeating it. The greatest lie that the Hebrew ever told you was that the Septuagint was translated from the Pentateuch. It's a lie. And if you can't stop them on that lie, then they're going to get away with every other lie. Or, or somehow, somebody will be able to create confusion. You got you to gotta unravel the confusion. That thought in your mind that the Septuagint was tr somehow translated from a Pentateuch, some pre-existing Hebrew text. As long as you got that in your mind, that's going to be a cancer in your brain. Because now I have to show you what the Pentateuch actually was. You understand? This is what the Pentateuch was. Dorothus of Sidon, look it up, was a first century Hellenistic astrologer who wrote a didactic poem on horoscopic astrology known in Greek as what? The Pentateuch. Five books. The Pentateuch was a textbook on Hellenistic astrology. So then what was the Septuagint? If the Septuagint was translated from the Pentateuch, this is what it had to be translated from. A, hor a horoscopic astrology known in Greek as the Pentateuch. All right, the Pentateuch was a textbook on Hellenistic astrology and has come down to us mainly from an Arabic translation dating from around 800 AD carried out by Omar Tiberitis. Uh, itself a translation of Middle Persian translation from the original Greek. It remains one of our best sources for the practice of Hellenistic astrology and it was a work of great influence on later Christian, Persian, Arab, and medieval astrologers. So when we're telling you that the Bible got all that astrology in it, and y'all say that's not true, then why is it that history records that there were Christian astrologers? 
Y'all want to act like y'all some squeaky clean people stuck on Jesus when you don't know your own history. Okay? The late first century, a time when Dorothus is believed to have flourished with a period of intense astrological development following two millennia of, acc of accumulated tradition. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going off the top of my head here. Okay? Now I'm just going on the top of my head, but you'll probably be even better. Um, Dorothus, yeah. So I don't even want to. Just study Dorothus of Sidon. You need to know about Dorothus because he is the author of the Pentateuch. So you got to get away from that. The, the Septuagint was created from the Pentateuch because what the Hebrew Israelites want you to believe is that the Pentateuch was just a Greek name for the Torah. That's a lie. You don't have two great books in history by the same name. How many books in history do you have called the Iliad and the Odyssey? Only one book, and it's written by Homer. Am I right? So anyway, it's not... It's, there's not the Iliad and the Odyssey written by Homer and the Iliad and the Odyssey written by Ankakek. There's only one Iliad and the Odyssey. There's only one Pentateuch. That's the point I'm making to you. There's only one Pentateuch in history. This is it. First century. Written by Dorothus of Sidon. He's from the... So you got to study that, 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 that... You have to study right here. They tell you that... Look. I'm going to show you something. You're going to like this. That's why I set it up this way. Dorothus of Sidon wrote the Pentateuch. Very little is known about Dorothus himself. Dorothus most likely lived and worked in Alexandria in Egypt, which in addition to being the most important scholastic center in the Hellenistic world, was also the main location where the oldest Mesopotamian, Greek, and Egyptian in order to create hor horoscopic astrology. According to Firmicus Maternus, Dorothus was originally a native of the city of Sidon. Now, if the man who wrote the Pentateuch was a native of Sidon, then let's look at Sidon where he came from. Phoenician cities, including Tyre and Sidon, were awash in Egyptianized material culture. That's why you have Egyptian culture in the Pentateuch. If the Pentateuch, which the Hebrews want to claim uh, is theirs, if you want to claim that the Pentateuch is yours, then you have to admit that where it came from was awash in Egyptianized material culture. No matter which way you travel back, you're coming back to Egypt. You don't have any choice in the matter. Lasting impressions. You're leaving your computer here. Yes, you are. You ain't got no choice in the matter. I'll bust you down. <laughs> anyway, anyway, yeah, we good. We good money. I didn't really feel like giving this today anyway. So, hey, yo, when? Yeah. Whatever you want, man. I'm here. Hello, I'm just yo, letting you know. Hold on, nigga. Hold on. But that's a hold on. That's a good short synopsis, though. That was pretty good, right there. Yeah, it is, good. it is good. Uh, it is good. It is good. Let me just run through real fast to see if there's anything else in here about you getting ready that they might appreciate. Oh, oh yo. Oh. <laughs> that's right. Yo, said Did you see that? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> yo. The you know they were hurt. Yo, tell me you ain't seen that the video I did on YouTube. Right? Nah, I didn't on my son. Yo, I did. Yo, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Hezekiah right is celebrated here. for Nobody purging. In the Bible, Hezekiah is celebrated for purging the Judahite religion of foreign influence, centralizing the cult of Jerusalem uh, and withstanding the siege of Jerusalem by the Assyrian monarch Sennacherib. One of the Bullai in the horde was in fact impressed with the seal of the great Judahite king. This the seal. It has the winged sun disc. And it has an ankh on both sides. So how you got a Hebrew Israelite seal with an ankh on both sides and the winged sun disc, and you're talking all this shit? Wow. Can I get right something there. real quick? Right there. Let me jump in real quick on that. That's it. Let me jump in real quick. Yeah. yeah. First of all, here's the... So, so you're looking at Kepler right there, right? But here's the important point. That's not even Kepler. That's the Bedet. The Bedet. Okay, but yeah. wait, but wait this. But you also got the ones with Kepler on yeah, there too, right? With Kepler too. But, but watch this. This is why those trading seals are so important. What did the trading seals do for the Israelites? What it did was it reunified them. Hezekiah recognized, right, that African symbology, right, would help reunify the people and put them back in their cultural context. But he used Egyptian symbols to do it. Why? Because they ain't got no motherfucking symbols. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't he use a Hebrew Israelite symbol to do he? <laughs> he used, a, a, a matter of fact, these symbols here would be what? Wouldn't that be um for the Polo Sinatic? This right here? Yeah, that's that's Can, so we would have to call it late Canaanite if you want to give it a name. That's not even Hebrew. No, so Hebrew has nothing to do with this. 
You, I mean, that, that, that looks more Phoenician than anything else. They're going to want to call it Paleo Hebrew. Ain't no such thing as Paleo Hebrew. Yeah, in that, in that, no such thing as that. Yeah, in, come on, y'all got to go. All right. All right. All right, boom, boom, boom. All right, let me let you get out of here, oh, man. I like yeah. that one right there, them coffins. The uh, coffins right, there. Israel and Judah, Egyptian culture, home away from home, 1,000 years. That's the Israel Museum. Why does the Israel Museum got African artifacts? <laughs> African artifacts. All of it. Part of Sphinx found in northern Israel, dig. Come on, I had so much I was going to yeah, go in on this, but I'm still going to go in on it. Oldest Bible in the world found in Egypt. Man, please. I embarrassed the hell out of them. I'm going to go off the top of the head. That was a powerful brother. I'm very proud of you, Unc. You came a long way. Yeah. I mean, I see you've been studying a lot of Shaka up most secretly, studying Brother Sarah Sutton Seti. You took a lot from everybody, you know, from N. Goldie and all the brothers, and um, you definitely stepping up your presentation. But what makes us better is when we challenge each other like Sarah was doing. Sarah knew a lot of the stuff you were saying was true. He wanted to see how you're going to respond to it. How can you come back? Show some um, primary. You know what I'm saying? And I think you did good on that. Let's give the general some of that. See what he can um, explain what, what the brother was talking about. Uh, you know, again, you know, we just I just don't give the white man no goddamn credit for nothing that he didn't create. And, you know, and that's the thing we have to understand being free from any validation by any European anywhere. We got to come to that point of our existence where we don't need the validation of nobody but ourselves to validate ourselves. That's what I'm talking about. The numbers very well, well may be real. But I mean, in every since the ancient, you know, he took it from us, so. the ancient times, there's been no confusion since the, until modern time that Africa was the Holy Land. That's a, that's a modern mental disease. But the ancients had already known that Ethiopia was the origin of all creation, and that the dates is lost into time. And if anybody could present the date, it would have to be the ancient Egyptians. Because they inherited the great catalog of thousands and thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of years which right. they used to create the 360 degree and the great year, right. 25,000 years. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, we, we don't know, but we know that it would have taken at least three times to do the great year. So that's 75,000 years. So that's tangible shit. So we can go on and on and on. We don't know of no beginning. Right. So, you know, again, we always have looked like humans, Africans. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we've looked at, looked like anything. Nobody else can prove anything different. Right. It's a good theory. Yeah, all right. Yeah, shoot, evolution, man, they've been working on that for the last hundred years. And the thing about it is... So do you is agree with the brother was saying? A lot of that, but I, I also understand that, you know, science is always moving forward, and we all got to keep our game up. You know, I learned a lot from SETI. I'm saying he learned from me. I learned from Shock. We learned from each other here. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's the first guy with the show enough superpower points. I'm saying SETI the one with the original power points, so I'm not taking that away from him. Right? And so I couldn't compete with his motherfucking ass in that shit. Don't all right. No, nah, hold on. Let me finish. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, he mad because I got him. Oh, yeah. He mad because I got him. <laughs> Look, he mad because I got him. Hold on. Hold on. And so I realized that it was no need for me in that niche. Right. So I had to develop my own niche. I had to. I had to make the shit silent. Keep it up to date. That's why I developed the team. You know what I'm saying? Scientific team. We needed to do this to stay on par with the Europeans. So like them two brothers say, so they won't be the ones telling the motherfucking story. We don't need white people for shit these days. And I think Shaki agree with me on that. Listen, yeah, fuck the Hebrews. You. They still think people come from the fucking Bible, right? Modern science, right? Africans, nobody ever said that they came from monkeys. They never said that. The science does not say that. They, had, they have scientific categories. He didn't. You ever heard him say that? He didn't. Well, he Ali Muhammad is a fool. Yeah, I heard him play that shit. That ain't what Dr. Ben said. Things and he, he don't know the context of what's Dr. Ben. Dr. Ben was of the craft. And every time he wanted to make it clear in his own personal belief, he would take us to the scrolls. But because the man is a college professor, he took the Europeans' own words and used them against him. 
it wasn't that he identified with being a, a from no damn monkey, you fool. <laughs> He's saying, damn it, you didn't took all the little means that you got to that you call science, and you still saying what we already didn't say. Yeah, so that was the only reason that the brother put the information there because he knew he was dealing with college students, university students all over the world, and that they were dealing with this information <clears throat> on the campus. So the man had to explain the information so that they would have something to go to the university to fight with. You know, the world of academia, that wasn't his own personal belief, fool. You can look at the crazy ass crackers in the damn, you know, he's showing, which are none but images that the European put out of himself. He did not, not at all say that he evolved from any one of them ugly ass crackers in that book. So you're wrong at that. Well, That's your interpretation. Well, yeah, here you uh, go, God. <laughs> I'll be with the elephants before I be with any cracker. Any but, cracker but listen, but the point I want to make is, right, <laughs> that, that, that bananas, you know what I'm saying, they have a certain amount of human DNA. They, I mean, we're all interconnected. And that's what the Nile Valley Africans was trying to teach us, that everything is everything. We're all interconnected. And that? DNA actually proves that. So I don't teach that monkey shit because available science doesn't say that. Let me say this. And I, I really could care less who agrees with it or, or disagrees with it. The way I feel is this. When a white man looks at me and he says, not that he's stupid enough to, you know, stand in front of me and say it, but and I might encounter one eventually that will, but... A white person looks at you, looks at me as a black person and says, oh, you're a monkey, right? You know what I tell them? I tell them, you paying me a compliment is not going to make me your friend. Why do I say that? I say that, I say that because I've never seen a monkey put a hole in the ozone layer. I've never seen a monkey put his own woman on the corner and have her sell her coochie for money to another species on top of that. I've never, there are things that I have seen human beings do to one another and to the planet that I have never seen a monkey do. So one of the first things that we need to do if we want to really break away from thinking like white people is we have to stop looking at animals as if they are somehow beneath us. You understand what I'm saying? Listen to what I'm saying. Because what I'm saying is, yo, duh, pa, listen to what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if you want to break away, truly break away from the way this white man thinks, you have to begin the process of stop. We have to stop looking at animals as if they are somehow beneath us. Because there are things that we do to each other that animals would never do to each other. The things that animals do to one another, they do either out of survival mechanism, Why instinct. Let me, I'm not saying you said it. Oh. Why are we so defensive? I'm saying, I'm, <laughs> so, like I tell my son, never say somebody made you. You, you, you take responsibility for your own emotions. So, the point I'm making is this. He's scared to say this shit. He jumped on said he's not. I don't talk. All right, go and fuck with you. Hey, look, we got a middle ground right there. I challenge Seti to an arm wrestling any day of the damn week for money. Okay? I, I, I don't do fear. Fear is toxic. So what, what I'm telling you is this, is that as, as, a, as it, I'm going to repeat myself because it's worth repeating. If you really want to break away, because you're talking about paradigms, the white man's paradigm is he is here and the animal is there. And to, and to, to exert his point, he said, and in that species of creatures that we call animals that is beneath us, we also place the African. Right? And so now in reactionary Thought process, what do we do? We ain't animals. Oh. I'm going to say it again because somebody who's watching this needs to hear this. It's going to be some school kid watching this who might have to deal with some dummy in this school because the first thing that comes out the cracker's mouth, whether they 10, 11, 12, 13, or 6 or 5, is monkey. It always comes out. And what I tell black people is you have to stop this reactionary bullshit because you've been taught that you've been taught the same cracker that you hate is the same cracker that told you that animals were somewhere down there on the totem pole. When your ancestor did what with animals? He elevated them above himself. What was his natures? 
What did he use to extol the nature do? He used those very animals that you're trying to place yourself above because the cracker told you that, that you're above animals. You got to really reverse your shit. If you're trying to be ancestor-like, then God damn it, be ancestor-like. Your ancestors wasn't walking around saying, the monkeys are down there, the apes are down there. What is Tahuti, the god of the nature of knowledge? What is he personified and typified by? By the cackling, by, by the chattering baboon. But you think you're better than a goddamn baboon. I'm not better than a baboon. I've never seen a baboon perform an abortion. I've never seen a baboon um, do a drive-by in his own neighborhood. Well, that's not true. Cause some, now, if you watch some of them baboons, they go at it with each other. But the point that I'm making, the point, yo, the point w which means that if baboons are doing drive-bys and we tend to do drive-bys, we might not be that much different. Right. And I have no problem. Me personally, I can't speak. I'm not trying to speak for SETI. I can't speak for SETI. I'm not speaking for my brother here. My, 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 my god brother here is a god killer. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to speak for any of them. I'm speaking with, with what that divine spark communicates to me that I don't question for no man. Because every man I know, I ain't yet met one man with two phalluses. He got one like me. That's it. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. If we are really going to break away from this cracker's thought process, you have to do it on, such, on, on a level that's so fundamental. And it's, it's really... It's, it's almost like that for me, because I, I, I used the term earlier when I was talking about the, the thought process that I perceived in my brother Seti some, I think maybe it's been about, about two or three years now. I noticed in his dialogue and his change, he got to a point where he just, in general, really began dismissing books. And I, I kind of understand that. And the reason I understand that is that very long ago, in my own, in my own for, pardon the pun, evolution, in my own uh, academic evolution, I got to a point where I realized that the first book, if you want to learn how to really read a book, is them trees, is what you're watching in your family environment, what you watch your children do, how you, is, your first book is how you respond to something somebody says. It's all at ground zero. You know what I mean? Everything else is after the fact. Everything else is after the fact. The observation always precedes everything. The observation always precedes the explanation. Always. So, coming from that observation perspective, and that's why I said he said, the only person who knows what is meant on that scroll is the person who wrote it, because that's the person who made the observation. We are, we are seeing it after the fact, after it's written down. We don't know what the person's motivation was, or anything of that nature. So again, I'm going to say this one last time. Stop putting animals down here. Stop, stop doing that because it's a cracker that told you how to do that. If our ancestors didn't feel that way, they would have used something else to typify the netches. I'll kill what anybody says. They would have used something else. All of the netches would have had human head form. And I'm going to tell you something. Their first college classroom was them animals. It was them animals that taught them everything. How to do this, that, and the other. All right, yo, brother Unk. Said he need the mic real quick, but I want to ask you this question. And when you finish, pass it to Seti. Brother Tazoriak kept asking you over and over Saturday, is the white man the devil? You refuse to say the white man was the devil, and this is why he kept coming at you. And you said the white man is not the devil. The white man is not my devil. And so he went into showing you why he is the number one devil on the planet but you refuse to say he was the devil brother and then he asked you was you a mason you also refuse to answer that too see I, I think the problem is this right that when Elijah Muhammad came he needed to do that because he was coming from a religious perspective a Muslim perspective right and, 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 and in the Muslim Quran right the blue eye right he had to say that from a religious perspective right but from a straight up on the ground, yo, I don't believe there's a devil. And I don't believe there's a God, right? Because they're European concepts and ideas, right? And so when you say a person is the devil, you actually put black people in fear of that because they fear the devil. Don't nobody want to die and go to hell and meet the devil, right? Listen, no, hold on, no, hold on. I got to agree that that just makes sense. But, but let me finish, let me finish, hold on. A devil is a mythological person, okay? All right, now, let's deal, let, let's deal. 
Doobolus is a Greek word, doobolus. It's a Greek word. But let me make the point here. But now let's deal with who the white man really is, right? He's a monster, okay, on the planet. He's a deceiver. He's out of order. He's a murderer. He's a raper. He's a destruction of fucking property. He's a kidnapper. His woman is their, their beast. The whole nine yards across the board, dude. Ain't no truth in none of that shit. So the truth is, that nigga can bleed just like us. So I'm not going to give him mythological status, yo. He here just like we here. And we need to deal with his motherfucking ass. Devil, God never killed the devil in the Bible. So when you make the white man the devil, right, that means he's undefeated. I refuse to make them undefeated. It's just a shifting paradigm. We think, right? We need to start thinking. It don't mean you wrong because you think the white man's a devil. I don't, I'm saying is, that's how I said he rock. I'm winning with that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yo, he, all his actions, the way he act, the, the things he do. Yeah, but see, but that, but they was looking at the parameters, yo, and we just adding to their work. So I'm not saying that you can't say that. I'm just saying that I'm not teaching my children that. But I have no problem. It's many definitions of the white man, mm -hmm. and the devil is one. Understanding that he's the source of wickedness. Mm -hmm. And you understand what I'm saying? That's the white man. The white man make that. You see? But, yeah, yeah. But he, 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 everywhere you go in this world, it's a flag up saying, white man, take your ass home. So this ain't this ain't no little myth. This is a real global reality where people the devil ain't just what the Bible say. The the, the devil is your mortal enemy. The one going to wake up and fight your ass every day. That's your devil. The white man is your mortal enemy. When he wakes up, he thinking about killing your ass and not just a few of you. He thinking about killing mass numbers. Don't take no little individual nigga who mine is smaller than a peanut. And yeah, he might be killing, but he only going to kill as many niggas as his arm will allow him to chop. But this cracker is dropping bombs and gas. He's working through the hospitals, killing niggas with his CVS homicides and the right aid is the wrong. And so this cracker is diabolically set up a world global system yep. of wiping out African people and people of color all people. over the planet. So if you cannot look at this system, no other system is in place. If you ain't read Francis, I'm sorry you it need to go. There's no other system in place. So how do you, that is your devil. Quit trying to humanize the revolution. Anything, you know, if it, you pick up shit and throw it on him. You piss on the cracker. Whatever it ain't about you being so scientific where you're going to break. We know what the, the term generally means. And that he's the key keeper of all wickedness on this planet. So based on those facts. He is the devil. His nature, though, is the beast. You ain't got to teach your babies that the white man is the devil. But I hope you show where them crackers got tails on their ass right. and that they got hair all over their goddamn body mm -hmm. and they got all type of nasty, wicked-ass diseases that only no, come no, up no. in their goddamn blood. Yeah. So if you can't tell your son that if he spread his blood... With this peck of wood, he might have a baby come out with three heads and two motherfucking uh, and two toes and all this <laughs> shit. And you ain't going to tell your baby that? This man is the beast because he's, he's polluted his own blood with animal blood. Okay? We talking about zoonotic diseases where if you too close to animals and you up under them, and the feces and the goddamn ticks and all the shit, that shit give you zoonotic diseases that are so powerful you can't even, they don't even have no cures for this shit. So this must be told. And since we know that it does not leave the body, many of these symptoms that they given to shit like Ebola and AIDS sound like a lot of the symptoms that you get 
from zoonotic disease. And zoonotic diseases is any disease that is passed from animal to man. Okay, and a lot of times it's through ventilation and shit. You understand what I'm saying? The passing of saliva. These crackers go out here fucking these animals and shit. And you passing semen and sperm amongst species. What the hell do you call that? See, that's what I'm saying. We get, we become so intellectual that we no longer have that grit and that grind that they were fully had body full of hair. They had tails. They had horns on their head. Okay, even when you talk about look at Hades, you can see many of the attributes of previous deities was added to the devil. When you look at uh, Pluto, he had the pitch for the, the, the trident you see what i'm saying he had the trident so ain't none many of the elements that you see in the devil are still from a european psyche when you talk about cramp krampus which they show you see you show the more and then you show the devil the devil is krampus but originally krampus was white krampus only became black when the fall of the Moors. But all before that, Krampus is white. Okay? So, okay then. So, when you talk about, and you got these white people putting these damn implants in their fucking head. Okay? To have horns and shit. I seen them do their babies. And then you listen to their music and they sing into who? That, that sh rocking gothic shit. All that heavy metal shit. They babies is singing to the devil. So how you not going to say, so a man think of, so is he. So he's entrenched into the devil, the vampire, the wicked side of the mythology and shit. That is him. That is, is in his spirit. Yeah. Now, the, the construct of the devil in the Bible, yes, a lot of it is, you know, information that not necessarily attributed to the white man particularly. But there are many attributes of the uh, devil that uh, is clearly de defined in, that, in the workings of the white man. Don't come out here talking about no white man ain't no devil. You want to hear something funny? You want to hear something funny? And, and this is my estimation, that white people existed, right, before the story of the devil came out. Yeah, give me a story that, that is pre-white man of the devil. I'm telling you that the actual story itself, right, was developed based off of looking at white people. So the white people was always worse than the devil. They're worse than that. There are actually human beings on earth that practice the most horrid things to human beings in nature. Ever known that it was so hard that when we ran across them, we developed stories to try to tell who they was. So they're worse than the devil. They're real. The devil's not real. And I think that's an important point to speak to right there. I want to recommend a book for those of you who are watching. Yeah, I won't. I want to recommend a book. I want to recommend that's H O K Water. I want to. I want to recommend a book. That's right. I want to recommend a book uh, to um, to all of those of you who are watching. There is a, a book called by written by Paul Lawrence Guthrie. It's called The Making of the White Man. And you need to read that book because in that book, he yeah it's a yeah they changed the cover though, yeah it's purple now and yeah um, I have the original one the black and white one though because it got the picture it got that uh, that white boy on it <laughs> right um, but what I find interesting in it are the anecdotes that are shared about what about the history of those regions that we know of as the Caucasus mountains today the Caucasus mountains today that that particular region there are anecdotes that come out of Eurasia the Eurasian steppes and what the anecdotes say is that all known civilization at that time which was represented by people of dark hue black people dark people that as a collective they created walls around this mountain this region in order to keep these 
humanoid types that we call white people today in order to keep them in. And I, I don't think there's ever really been, and this comes actually out, some of this comes out of the annals, or the annals rather, of the um, literary repository of the Caucasus region. In other words, they have their, just like if you go to certain indigenous uh, uh, parts of Africa, they have their own literary repository of their own histories, like, like ancient Egypt or something like that. They also have their own literary repositories of their own uh, uh, record keeping, so to speak. And sometimes people will tell the truth about themselves, and I'm pretty sure that that's where some of that information came from. I can't verify that. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, so bottom line is, get that book, Making of the White Man, Paul Lawrence Guthrie, right. and um, you decide for yourself if these ancient people are describing a devilish people that they're trying to keep in. Because why else would you build a 200-foot wall? I just want to add this quick. I'm, yeah. I'm going to give y'all brothers, you know, I, I can hold the mic forever, but I don't. I just want to make qu <laughs> quick points. Okay, We're not, I'm not trying to be intellectual. I just want you to understand that any fucking rock I could pick up and throw at the cracker, I'm going to throw it. I'm not holding no motherfucking punches. We need to know that the first, the first step to moving towards liberation is understanding that the white man is your mortal enemy. And a mortal enemy wakes up just like a goddamn lion wake up to hunt a hyena. And I ain't never seen a goddamn lion a friend with a hyena. N not one. Not one. Unless the white man didn't poison that a lion with some DNA mixture and fuck that lion up. But I ain't never seen a lion that ever was a friend with a hyena. It never happened in the history of creation. Unless it was some sick shit going on. If that lion was in his natural state of mind, he'd kill any hyena that come in his circle. Young or old. Uh, young or old. So we, we got to be clear about that. So we picking up any stone that we can to throw at the beast to let our babies know that the white man is the enemy. And then they'll come up with strategic plans to stop this peck of wood from killing them on these streets. Because they're going to have to loke up themselves because these old head niggas don't want to do it. So... Black power to that. The white man ain't Black shit. Power. White man ain't shit. I hope that the, your fall is tonight. <laughs> God damn it, not tomorrow. Tonight. On that. <laughs> tonight. I hope all your <laughs> shit shit come crashing in. I pray to all the ancestors. <laughs> Dr. We ben, I'm about shit. to put the hella hella shrine up in the house. Already got a shrine to Doc, but I, all the greats. 